All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over seven pretty simple search engine optimization tips that are gonna help you improve your rankings in the Google search engine. So some different ways to get more traffic through search engine optimization. So I'm gonna get right into it. So the first one is going to be to make sure you're using the Google Keyword Planner to find the best keywords for your business. So you can use the Google Keyword Planner. So what you wanna do is come into your Google Ads account go to tools and come into keyword planner and you're going to see a page that looks just like this. So what you want to do is click on find new keywords here and either enter your, your URL here, enter your main keywords here or enter a competitor URL here and you're going to be able to find a lot of different keywords. So for this specific tutorial, I'm going to be talking a lot about farmhousegoals.com. So it's a website related to farmhouse decor. Um, so under find new keywords here, what I can do is either enter my website so I could do farmhousegoals.com and just do the entire website or what I can do is enter one of my main keywords so just do something like farmhouse decor so if I take that main keyword here you can enter up to 10 different keywords so I can do something like farmhouse furniture all sorts of different ideas click on get started and what it's going to do is it's going to pull up the most relevant keywords for my business right here if I click on average monthly searches it'll pull up the top search top keywords by the average monthly searches so overall search volume you can just see a lot of different ideas down here Another keyword tool that you can use as well is Ubersuggest. So it's neilpatel.com slash Ubersuggest. It's a great keyword tool. It pulls in a lot of the same data as the Google Keyword Planner, and it gives you some additional information as well. If you're not familiar with how to get started with keyword research for search engine optimization, you might be interested in our video that we did recently. So keyword research for SEO 2019. I will put this video right in the description and I'll also leave it as one of the comments so you can find it very easily. So in that video, we go over how to find a list of keywords just like this and how to come up with content ideas for your business. So it's a pretty simple idea. And basically all we do is use the Google Keyword Planner, pull some of our top keywords. We pull the top overall keywords by average monthly searches and start coming up with some different content ideas. So a really simple idea for how to come up with the top keywords for your business. Keyword research is so important when it comes to search engine optimization. My two favorite Google, or my two favorite keyword tools are the Google Keyword Planner and Ubersuggest. So if you go to ubersuggest.com or neilpatel.com slash ubersuggest, it'll bring you to this page. You can do the same thing. You can enter a domain or you can enter a keyword. It'll give you a ton of different ideas for your business. And then our keyword research for SEO, it'll make it a lot easier to come up with a nice long keyword list. We came up with 300 total keywords and then we started breaking it down by different content ideas. So number one is to use the Google Keyword Planner, use Ubersuggest, and come up with keywords for your business. So number two, so once you have that long list of keywords there, the next thing you wanna do is come up with your content schedule. Come up with some type of content strategy. Again, this is the last time I'll tell you about another video that will be very helpful, but we did a simple content strategy plan for websites for 2019. So basically how to come up with a list of keywords and then how to come up with a list of content and how to start creating a content schedule. So what you can do is, you don't have to watch either of these videos, what you can do is just pull your top keywords right here and then come over, you can use Excel, you can use Google Sheets, and you could do something that looks just like this. So we created a content strategy. So basically all you need to do is create a week, so this would be week one, this is week two, this is week three, and then pull out your top keywords. So you could just use some of these top keywords here by average monthly searches, and start creating content based around your top keywords here. So once you start creating more and more content all around the same relevant keywords and posting it to your website and following a simple content strategy plan. So we have Monday, we're gonna create an article about beach chairs. Wednesday, we're gonna create an article about beach decor. Friday, we're gonna create an article about nautical decor. And then we're gonna use the other days of the week to improve our overall content. You can enter the URL here so you know where all your URLs are. And you can always go back and improve that content over time. And what you can do is do the type of content that you want to create. So we have products and article here for Surfside PPC. Sometimes it's a video. You could also start putting your social calendar together like this. Um, so just another idea of when you can share some of your content that you're creating. So number one is use the Google Keyword Planner to find keywords. And number two is to make sure you come up with a content schedule and a content strategy for how you're gonna produce different types of content that are based around the top keywords for your business. So that's one and two. So number three is gonna to be to understand the importance of long tail keywords and the impact they have on some of these short tail keywords. So farmhouse sinks is gonna be a short tail keyword. Trying to rank high for farmhouse sinks is, 
is really difficult because there's a lot of competitors trying to rank high for farmhouse sinks. Now, the main thing I want to do is make sure that I understand that how some of these short tail keywords like farmhouse copper sinks, farmhouse stainless steel sinks, farmhouse fire clay sinks, all these different types of pages play into me ranking for farmhouse sinks in general. So what I want to do is create a great piece of content for this short tail keyword farmhouse sinks and then make sure I also have different content on that page about these different types of sinks and also different pages of content. So the best way to look at it is if you want to rank for some of these really competitive keywords is you need to understand the long tail keywords that go along with them. So one thing you can do is just come in and take this keyword right here. We can go back to the Google Keyword Planner. You can use Uber Suggest and you just come in here and you enter a keyword like farmhouse sinks and just enter that one keyword, click on get results, and it's gonna pull up the most relevant keywords related to this individual keyword here. And you wanna make sure that you include these keyword ideas on that page, and you wanna make sure you're creating different pages related to these keywords as well. So it's a really important part of search engine optimization. It's just like for Surfside PPC, if I wanna rank high for the keyword Google Ads, I need to make sure that I have a lot of different content related to Google Ads. It's a lot of the reason why I create videos like Google Ads keyword match types, bid strategies, location targeting, all those different types of videos help me rank higher for Google Ads, not only in YouTube, but also in Google as well. So this is a strategy I always use, is when I'm trying to rank for some of these really competitive keywords like Farmhouse Sync, I wanna make sure that I'm also creating pages for some of these most relevant keywords down here as well. So I'm gonna go through white farmhouse sink a little bit as we go. So some of the other examples I showed you is fire clay farmhouse sink, stainless steel farmhouse sinks. So these are all really competitive keywords and I need to make sure that I have a very strong content strategy where I'm creating content for all these different pages, linking it back to this main page and continuing to optimize so I can keep growing my page in search results. I'm still working very hard to try to get farmhouse sinks to rank higher in search engines. Um, my farmhouse goals website does okay in search engines. It doesn't do great. So I'm trying to work harder and harder on it so I can keep growing my rankings. Now I'm trying to grow Surfside PPC a lot right now, but farmhouse goals is another one that I'm working on. And this is one of the main keywords that if I can rank high for, I know I can really improve my revenue because it's such a competitive keyword and the products that are listed on this page are very expensive. So there's a lot of reasons why I wanna rank high for this keyword and I need to understand the importance of long tail keywords in order to rank high for this short tail keyword. Okay, so number four here is gonna to be to look at some of the top content in the search results and see the types of pages that you're gonna to have to create in order to rank high. So what I've done is I've come to Google, I've searched this keyword farmhouse sinks and you can see Home Depot ranks high, Wayfair ranks high. It's gonna be really hard for me to compete with some of these different competitors just because they have so many people working on their websites. They have such a strong digital strategy and search engine optimization strategy, um, overstock.com. So there's a lot of different things here. Now what I like to do is open up some of these other pages and see what type of content they have. So if I open up this, you can see they just have a list of a ton of different products for sale. It's obviously Wayfair.com, so Google's gonna give them great rankings in general because they have a very, very strong search engine optimization strategy. So what I've done is I've created a page on my website for farmhouse sinks, just like this, so it's more of a blog article type. I need to update it, um, and then I come over to shop here, and if I come to farmhouse sinks, you can see I have a lot of different pages on here for my shop page as well. So I have a couple different ways that I'm trying to rank for farmhouse sinks right now. Um, and the way I kind of go about trying to figure out the type of content I need to create is by looking in Google and seeing some of the top pages and search results and making sure that my content is close to as good, if not better than some of the other pages. So looking at the top content and search results is a great way to understand the type of content that you need to create, regardless of niche, regardless of industry, you can see the different types of pages that rank high in Google. Again, to take the Google ads example again, if I search Google ads guide, how to use Google ads, um, I can see what some of the top pages are that rank high so I can make sure that I'm creating content that's gonna rank high as well. So number four is look at the top content and search results and look at what your competitors are doing and make sure you basically copy some of their ideas and apply them to your own business so that you can rank high in search engines as well. Okay, so number five is gonna be to make sure you're using Google Search Console, a completely free tool to see your top search queries by impressions, by clicks. You can see your top pages as well. 
We have a video on our channel about the Google Search Console. If you're not familiar with all these different tabs to the left hand side, we go over everything that you need to know about the Google Search Console. It's really easy to install. You just use your Google account to create a Google Search Console account and you can link it using Google Analytics. So it's really simple to use Google Search Console. And what I like to do is look at my top search queries and look at the top impressions and clicks, my average position, some different data like that. So I'm just looking at one day's worth of data here and you can see some of my top search queries for farmhousegoals.com. So what I like to do is click on export data over here, go to Google Sheets. Usually I'll use a larger date size than just one day. I'll use the last 28 days or something along those lines. You can either download the CSV file or open it in Google Sheets. And then what I'd like to do is see some of my top search queries here. You can see clicks, impressions, average position. So I don't want to give away too much data for this website, but what you can see here is my top search queries so I know where I need to improve and some existing keywords that I'm already ranking for. So I love using the Google Search Console because it gives you so many ideas about the types of content you're already ranking well for and really where you can make a lot of improvements. So what you can do is take some of these search queries here, enter them over in the Google Keyword Planner, see the average monthly searches, and then kind of have an understanding of which keywords are the most valuable for your business. So you know that some of these that you're already ranking for get a certain number of average monthly searches. Let's just say, for example, I use farmhouse shelves here. Let's say I know that that gets 5,000 average monthly searches and farmhouse curtains only gets 2,000. Then I know that I can continue to optimize for some of these types of keywords related to farmhouse shelves. And again, going back to our long tail keyword strategy, making sure that I'm creating all sorts of different pages on my website and optimizing all of that content so I can continue to rank high for these really competitive keywords. So using this data that you have where you pull your top keywords just like this and then matching them up with the keywords that you're already ranking for here and continuing to optimize for those keywords is a great way to really improve your Google search engine ranking. So use the Google Search Console, a completely free tool if you're not already using it. So this, the Google Search Console along with Google Analytics, along with the Google Keyword Planner are three of my favorite tools that I use to basically grow my websites. So make sure you're using all of them for your search engine optimization efforts because it's only gonna help you really grow your search engine traffic over time. Okay, so for number six, it's gonna be how to improve some of your existing content. Make sure you're using the best on-page SEO strategies. So I love this guide from backlinko.com. I'll make sure I link it in the video description so you can check it out as well. But they have this whole entire infographic of perfect on-page SEO, 16 key on-page SEO factors that search engines and users love. So if you scroll down, you can see start title tag with your keyword, use SEO friendly URLs, add modifiers to your title, Put your title in an H1 tag, um, so make sure you're using images and different types of images to really represent your content. That's going to help you rank high as well. Wrap subheadings in H2 tags, so make sure you check out all of these different tips through backlinko.com. I always use this when I'm creating a blog post, and now I basically just memorized it. So when I create a new piece of content, so I have something here, white farmhouse sinks. So if we go to the page, you can see the title is white farmhouse sinks. I have an H1 tag, white farmhouse sinks. I put the keyword right here in the very beginning. And also the URL at the top is the same exact thing as well. So I use all of these different strategies to help me rank higher in search engines. So making sure you're optimizing your title tag, your meta description, you can use a free plugin Yoast SEO. When, if you're using WordPress and there you can enter your focus key phrase here. So I have white farmhouse sinks. They'll show you some of the different analysis for your page. So some problems right now, um, it says single title, H1 should only be used as your main title. Um, so some different ideas there, but make sure you're optimizing for on-page SEO. It's such an important part of your search engine optimization efforts. And it's really the only way that you're gonna be able to rank as high as some of your competitors. If you're not using some of these top on-page SEO factors, then Google's not gonna look at your website and understand exactly what you're trying to rank for. This is your way to tell Google, this is the keyword I wanna rank for and check out our content because basically this is the reason why we should be ranking for this keyword because we have the best images, we have the best content, we have the best information, we have the best videos, whatever it is that you're trying to use to make sure that you're ranking high in search engines. So number six, understand the top on-page SEO factors. And specifically, you can use this exact infographic here. I think it's extremely helpful for understanding the type of things Google is looking for in your content. 
Now, number seven and last but not least is to make sure that you're updating your old content as well. So as you create these different pages, so I recently just updated this page right here. So what I like to do is just come in here. There's a publish date through WordPress. It's saying published on April 17th. I'm creating this video on April 18th. So what you want to do is click on edit here. Anytime you make edits to your pages, you want to make sure you're updating your publish date as well here. Um, so some people don't show their dates at all in their content. That's another option that you have is just to create pages or to hide dates from your content altogether. But if you have dates here when things are published and updated, regardless, I always update them here in WordPress. And then what you also wanna do is make sure you're looking at some of your old posts. So if we look here, these are my older posts through WordPress, through Farmhouse Goals. You can see it's a pretty new website. So my oldest post is 2018, 1024. So I did something for Farmhouse Christmas ornaments here. So some different things here. And as I update these pages, and these are a bunch of pages that I need to update as well. So you can see on the 24th, I added a lot of new content. Um, what you want to do is make sure that you're going through and editing this content, updating your content, and then always for something like cast iron farmhouse sinks, the last time I updated it was October 24th. And the reason I know that is because every time I updated it, I update the publish date as well. So it's a great way to know the types of content that you need to update because you want to make sure you're updating all of your old content so that it can continue to stay relevant in search results. If you just do a quick search right now, basically for anything related to marketing, if you look at top search engine optimization strategies, top video marketing strategies, what Google is going to show you a lot of times is pages that are the most recent. So if you are you have a page that's from 2015, even if you created a great guide on how to get website traffic or the top video advertising strategies, different things like that, Google is going to start to look at your content as outdated. So for number seven, it's just going to be to make sure that you're updating your old content. And then in addition to updating it, I also update my publish dates anytime that I update my old content. So if I created something in 2018 and I go back and I update some things here, what I'll do is just come right here, make sure I have April, and then I'll usually do the most recent date, either yesterday or today click on OK and it's that simple and you can just click on update and this can be relevant whether you're using WordPress or really any other content management system. So some different ideas there for search engine optimization to quickly recap, make sure you're doing keyword research for SEO, make sure you're coming up with a content schedule, make sure you understand the value and importance of long tail keywords when it comes to ranking for short tail keywords. Look at the top content in search results already to understand what Google is ranking for certain keywords that you're trying to rank for. Use the Google Search Console as soon as you start to get more data about your own rankings to see the search queries that you are ranking high for and to see some of your top pages in the Google search results and some areas where you can really improve. Make sure you're using some of the top on-page SEO strategies so that all of your content is really optimized for the Google search engine. And last but not least, make sure you're updating your old content in addition to creating new content. You want to make sure that you keep everything as updated and as relevant as possible. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching our video today and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.